Our guest today is Cook County Board President. There are a few things about her that I wanna share with you. Number one, she is a frequent attendee at City Club of Chicago events, like today, 400 people, for which we are enormously grateful. So I wanna repeat that. She is a frequent attendee of City Club of Chicago events for which we are enormously grateful. So let's thank her for that. Thank you very much. Our guest today also encourages members of her leadership team, Mr. Menacchio, Lynetta, on and on and on, to speak at the City Club of Chicago. Let me repeat that. Our guest today encourages, encourages her leadership team to speak at the City Club of Chicago. So let's give her a round of applause for that, too. Thank you. There is no better supporter in public office of the City Club of Chicago than our guest today. One other thing. She is the mother of two beautiful children and, and the grandmother of three beautiful grandchildren, Braxton, Xavier, and Ava. Ava. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony, Tony Preckwinkle. Madam President. Good morning. I'm really pleased to be here today, and especially I'm grateful for that kind introduction. I want to acknowledge a couple folks uh, who came in a little late. First, uh, Commissioner Bridget Gaynor, Cook County Board of Commissioners. <laughs> Commissioner Stan Moore, where's Stan? I'm grateful to both of them for joining us this morning. Um, we acknowledge Hill Hammock, who's chair of the board of our health and hospital system. Thank you, Hill. And also, I'd like to acknowledge Joe Flanagan, who's head of the foundation for our health and hospital system. I think Joe is over there. And of course, Alderman, Alderman Joe Moore was introduced. He and I came into the city council in the, same, in the same year, 1991. Thank you for joining us, Joe. I'm very grateful to the City Club. It's an organization that has facilitated critical conversations asked probing questions of leaders, and shined an introspective light on the inner workings of our region for a century. I've had the distinct pleasure of addressing the City Club a number of times, and I'm grateful for the invitation to return. A little over a year ago, I stood here and spoke about the escalating fear and anxiety felt here and across the country, brought about by a bully of a president a craven Congress, and a hopeless governor. I'm encouraged by the decisions recently made by voters and hope this is a sign of better things to come. I said then, and I believe now more than ever, that the need for a caring and fair government has never been greater. And today we take a deliberative step to show that government should be the instrument of compassion, not cruelty. I'm releasing today the policy roadmap and outlining my priorities for the next five years. The plan, as you'll hear in more detail, focuses on equity and improving the lives of all of our residents. The plan establishes goals and strategies for our work in justice, health, economic development, and the environment. These priorities are built around a mission to serve as a good steward of public resources by building vibrant and sustainable communities for all residents, and a vision of being a leader in creating communities where people want to live, learn, work, and play. The creation of this roadmap began more than a year ago, just after I spoke here. This policy roadmap reflects many voices that share a vision for the success of our community. We gathered and incorporated input and feedback from employees, residents, community groups, other governmental agencies, partners in the not-for-profit, civic, and private sectors. We're grateful to all those who made their voices heard throughout the planning process 
and are proud of what's been created. Throughout the planning process, various themes emerged from the conversations we had with thousands of participating employees, residents, and stakeholders. We asked them to envision the community they want for their children and their grandchildren. From these insightful conversations, we identified three foundational values, equity, engagement, and excellence. A path to a more equitable Cook County recognizes how racially and economically segregated this county is and the tremendous, tremendous disparities that exist. This segregation leads to inequity and hurts the entire region economically. In their cost of segregation report, the Metropolitan Planning Council estimated that we would generate an additional $4.4 billion, $4.4 billion income in this region if we reduce segregation to the national median. Governments have an essential obligation to use their resources and leadership to address these disparities and provide all residents opportunities regardless of race, ethnicity, or zip code. Success and opportunity should not be looked at as a finite resource that must be distributed sparingly. It's time to correct historic inequities and make sure our region is working for all of our residents. As Paul Wellstone, Senator from, Mass from Minnesota used to say, we all do better when we all do better. A path to a more engaged constituency means recommitting ourselves to creating ways for the community to participate in our planning and decision making. More than that, it also means making sure that we translate engagement and outreach into tangible improvements. And the pursuit of excellence means not being content with what we've already accomplished. I'm proud of my record and the work we've done to better serve the residents of Cook County. We'll continue working to be more transparent, more accountable, and more effective by building on what we've already accomplished. Recognizing the importance and effectiveness of our modernizing efforts, we're further expanding our work to provide smart governance. In the coming year, we will establish the Office of Research, Operations, and Innovation to further make the business of government more efficient and cost effective. The new department will identify opportunities for improvement and implement creative data-driven solutions. Viewed through the lens of equity, engagement, and excellence, we identified six policy priorities upon which to concentrate our efforts. We will build communities that are healthy, vital, safe and thriving, sustainable, smart, and open. This is a plan that's comprehensive and ambitious. Creating healthy communities requires addressing health inequities. Access to health care is a right and a privilege, not a privilege. As part of the roadmap, we're taking a holistic approach to creating healthy communities. From access to safe housing and quality employment to the availability of public transportation and nutritional food, this is a multifaceted plan to address a complex problem. Taking a comprehensive view also requires us to address health disparities to ensure all residents live in equitable and healthy communities, regardless of race, socioeconomic status, or geography. With this framework in mind, we're committed to addressing the barriers to assess accessing health care many residents experience, particularly in communities of color and immigrant communities. To do so, we will continue to improve accessibility of our services and support community-based health care solutions. Our efforts to promote, promote health and wellness will also in, include increasing access to healthy food. We know that fresh fruits and vegetables have a dramatic impact on health. We'll also continue to encourage the use of the Cook County Forest Preserves for exercise, recreation, and access to nature. We're also excited to be introducing a new online initiative launching this month through the Housing Authority of Cook County. And Rich Minacchio is here. Thank you, Rich, for joining us. It's called Be Well. Be Well, which stands for Work, Earn, Learn, and Live. It's an online platform meant to act as a guide for residents looking for connections to employment, educational, and supportive resources throughout Cook County. By providing the people we serve with an online one-stop shop to find valuable information, such as parenting advice, 
scholarship information, and job application assistance, Be Well will be a helpful tool for Housing Authority of Cook County residents and the county as a whole. While we take significant steps to improve the health of our residents, we must plan to do the same for local businesses. We will foster vital communities through our work and partnerships in economic and community development. We'll focus on inclusive regional economic growth, workforce development and education, and addressing the issue of quality housing. In recent years, many areas of Cook County, including the central downtown district within the city of Chicago, have experienced robust economic growth, rising property values, and quality of life improvements. However, a substantial portion of the region, particularly in the southern and western suburbs, struggles with high levels of unemployment, declining property values, and limited access to essential services that help to improve the quality of life. We have unique responsibility to reduce inequity by ensuring policies and fiscal decisions consistently meet the needs of all residents, especially residents who are often marginalized and excluded from decision making. I firmly believe that government must promote a more equitable distribution of economic development. This requires strategic investments such as prioritizing employment services and job creation in communities with affordable housing but few jobs. In addition to a regional approach and industry-focused economic development, equitable growth requires the implementation of far-reaching economic development tools to assist entrepreneurs and small businesses, particularly those owned by women, minorities, or people living with disabilities. Years of inequity, indifference, and institutional racism will not be reversed overnight, but we're up to the challenge. Better health and improved economic development means little if our residents are not safe. So we will work to foster safe and thriving communities through our work and partnerships in criminal justice. We'll work collaboratively to implement violence reduction strategies proven to increase community safety. This includes advocating for sustainable reforms within the criminal justice system and investing in community-based services for our residents. These strategies work to ensure safety for our residents while creating an equitable justice system. Simply put, violent crime will be punished, but at the same time, every person must have access to fair treatment regardless of race or economic status. One of the most pressing challenges to creating safe and thriving communities continues to be gun violence. Over the last two years, as part of our work to reform the criminal justice system, we've broadened our focus to address gun violence. It's abundantly clear that gun violence continues to impact people of color in the very same communities that are most impacted by the criminal justice system. These communities have historically experienced a myriad of challenges, including a deficiency of infrastructure, high levels of segregation, lack of employment opportunities, and under-resourced schools. Applying a public health approach to combating gun violence holds great promise as it addresses these historic inequities. This will require partnering with the City of Chicago and other stakeholders to implement coordinated and comprehensive prevention and intervention activities and strategies within impacted communities. A thriving Cook County also means a cleaner and environmentally conscious Cook County. We'll foster sustainable communities by encouraging green initiatives. We'll prioritize environmental justice. We'll address climate change and invest in clean energy and develop green jobs. And environmental justice means creating equitable access to green spaces. Creating sustainable communities also benefits the health of our residents. A clean environment reduces the rates of asthma and cancer. Outdoor activity lowers levels of heart disease and diabetes. Access to nature improves health and lowers stress and crime and improves learning for children. Better health also means residents and local governments spend less on health care. From the effects of climate change to uneven development across Cook County due to persistent segregation, we must address past environmental in injustices in, in underserved communities and re remove barriers to a new green economy. 
Targeted economic investment in conjunction with efforts promoting environmental improvements, managing stormwater, and reducing vulnerabilities to climate change will be critical to building resilient and sustainable communities. Targeted investments will also extend beyond public infrastructure. We will foster smart communities by maximizing the benefits of government buildings, modernizing technology infrastructure, and improving transportation systems. Through a holistic transportation approach, we can address gaps in mobility to create an equitable and multimodal transportation system. Our mission must extend beyond providing transportation access to government buildings and services and daily activities to establish a foundation for future community and economic growth. A connected transportation system will allow us to ensure well-paying jobs are located within the reach of our residents, especially residents who are currently excluded from employment opportunities due to long, complex commutes. Our transportation infrastructure must promote equity by being safe and accessible for residents living with disabilities. At the same time, we must create transit accessible, pedestrian, and bicycle friendly environments that bring these jobs closer to home. Through our targeted planning and maintenance of our public infrastructure, we will close the gap in access to services, facilities, and jobs that our residents and businesses depend on. Finally, we will foster open communities and achieve operational excellence by being accountable to our communities and continually improving the effectiveness of government services. We need to in increase our engagement with residents, community partners, and businesses to reduce barriers to accessing public services and doing business with the county. Our government exists to serve residents. We greatly value their contributions and feedback. We're committed to ensuring this engagement is accessible, translated for non-English speakers, and culturally competent. Continuous operational improvement is the key to making the county a better place to live, work, and do business. The policy roadmap provides a strategic foundation for improvement and operational excellence. It represents a key, path, a key step on the path towards a more innovative, effective, and equitable government. Together, these policy priorities create a comprehensive agenda we will implement to provide innovative and essential services to residents and ensure that Cook County is an exceptional place to live, work, play, and visit. Built on the pillars of equity, engagement, and excellence, this is a plan that believes in the best of Cook County and the best for Cook County. This is a plan that is a beginning to building a foundation for fairness and equity. I will end by saying that a short speech does not do justice to the many, many, many hours of work of so many people. I'd like to thank in particular my Chief of Staff, Lynetta Haynes-Turner, as well as Alex Ensign and Mara Hennigan in my office. I'd also like to thank Frank Beal of the Civic Consulting Alliance and the organizations that provided important feedback, such as Access Living, American, Arab American Family Services Coalition, the Chicago Community Bond Fund, Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, the Collaborative for Health Equity in Cook County, Heartland Alliance, the Illinois Justice Project, MPC, the Metropolitan Planning Council, Neighborhood Housing Services, Public Health Woke Coalition, Women Employed, and the Woodstock Institute. Thank you. Now being a, a teacher, I always say this is my favorite part of any, uh, any forum or any speech, which is questions. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if anybody has any questions that they would like to have um, President Preckwinkle answer, you know, just hold up your card. Members of our staff will come around and pick them up. Okay. Um, this is from Gabriel Mitchell with Angel Flights Marketing Services. Gabriel, are you here today? The question is, Cook County Health Services does little business with African American owned business. If a subcontractor is awarded a job, the prime contractor will not honor the subcontractor award. 
How would you bring integrity back to the Cook County MBE program? All right, first let me say that on the Cook County side, which is offices under the president, we have done, I think, a pretty good job in addressing the concerns and needs of MBEs and WBEs. And every year we publish a report that shows our progress, and every year we've done better than the last. We still have a long way to go. Uh, last year I think we did about $22 million uh, in business with African American firms. I think that was the focus of the question. Um, and in 2013 I think it was about $7.6 million. Now, we have some challenges. The health and hospital system has an independent governing board. And uh, frankly, in 2006 and then again in 2010, the board made it quite clear that that was an independent body. So we've talked, and, and Hill is here, about some of the challenges that the health and hospital system faces in terms of contracting. Uh, particularly in light of the fact that a lot of the purchases they make are of very expensive medical equipment and there are very few um, minority and women-owned businesses in that, in that field. But I would suggest that the person, Angel, what is it, Angel? Angel Flight Services. Right. Um, I would suggest that you uh, check with me at the end of this meeting and with Hill and we'd be glad to try to address the concerns that you raised. Okay, thank you. Yes, it was um, Angel Flight Marketing Service. Okay, here's a question, Madam President, from Char Rivette. She's with the Chicago Children's Advocacy Center. One in ten children are victims of sexual abuse, and every corner of Cook County is affected. What is your vision of a comprehensive sexual abuse prevention program? Uh, frankly, I think this is a, an arena in which our health and hospital system is better able to, uh, to try to address. But we have worked very closely uh, with both the public defender and the state's attorney around criminal justice issues, and surely um, the sexual abuse of children falls into the criminal justice arena. So I have worked hard to bring a new and more compassionate uh, state's attorney into office. And I'm very grateful for the work that Kim Fox does, and we'll continue to try to work with her around very problematic issues such as this. Okay, thank you. This is from uh, Howard Singh. Howard, where are you? Harvard. Harvard. Sorry. And it's a her. It's a she. I know, and I know, <laughs> I know her for many years. We know each other. You'll never hear the end of it. Point of on. disclosure. <laughs> You know, when you come into the Union League Club, you cannot bring your briefcase upstairs with you in your coat. And I left my reading glasses in my briefcase, so that's why I'm squinting. So give me a, give me a break. Um, part of the solution to some of your policy priorities deal with housing. Can you speak more about how affordable housing will be addressed? So first of all, let me say, uh, Rich Monacchio is here. He's executive director of the Housing Authority of Cook County. And one of the decisions that I made early on is that um, a significant portion of our resources to address affordable housing would be, would be spent with, with HAC, with the Housing Authority of Cook County. So frankly, supporting the work of the Housing Authority, which addresses the needs of our um, most marginalized and um, poorest residents those resources have gone, frankly, to the Housing Authority of Cook County. Um, and that was not, frankly, the pattern and practice in the past, but it's what surely I thought was appropriate. But we work uh, very hard to support affordable housing around the county. We focused, frankly, on the areas of greatest need, which are the southern and western uh, portions of the county. Those, are, those parts of our county contain the communities that are most challenged and have the greatest need for affordable housing. So that's been the way in which we've directed our resources. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have several more questions here. Uh, one is uh, that I've been thinking of, uh, Madam President, um, 
the policy, the, the, the five-year plan that you've announced, um, will enacting this, how will it be affected by the recent November elections and their results? Because there's some change clearly on the uh, county board, the board of commissioners. Some commissioners will not be returning. Some new uh, people will be coming aboard, including I see uh, commissioner-elect uh, Bill Lowry out here. So I was just wondering, how will all of that affect the um, programs that you've outlined? Thank you. First, let me begin with an apology to, to Bill, who will soon be my commissioner. Um, Bill Lowry was elected commissioner uh, in the November election, and when I acknowledged Bridget Gaynor and Stan Moore, I did not acknowledge him, so Bill's going to give me a hard time at the end of this breakfast. <laughs> Bill Lowry, thank you very much for being with us this morning. First of all, I think the, the, the critical issue is we have a new governor. And this has been a very challenging uh, four years with Bruce Rauner as governor. And we went for, for 736 days without a budget. And that was devastating in three important respects. First of all, our social service and networks were severely challenged. Many small social service agencies went out of business because they did not get the um, reimbursements that they uh, had, had historically gotten for the state for services they provided on behalf of the state. And even big organizations like Lutheran Social Services um, suffered considerable cutbacks in staff and programming. I'd like to thank Cardinal Supich because um, in those difficult uh, years, he scrounged resources from wherever and kept Catholic charities at the same level of, of functioning and support that it, it had previously. But the rest of our social service safety network was just devastated. Our institutions of public higher education, and not just Chicago State, but Northeastern Illinois University and Eastern and Western and Southern were really challenged because they didn't get the regular allocations they get from the state, nor could their students get MAP grants, scholarship supports. And then finally, local units of government like Cook County who provide services on behalf of the state didn't get their, their payments as well. And on a good month, the state owed us tens of millions of dollars. In a bad month, they owed us hundreds of millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, and that was a nightmare physically, and it was a nightmare, as I said, because we saw social services shrinking, programming being reduced, and we knew that our institutions of higher education were struggling. So I look forward to a much better relationship uh, with the governor than I've had in the last four years. So that's the first thing. And this governor is committed to finding revenue to properly fund government. And when the state doesn't have money and the burden trickles down to local units of government, we have real challenges. Because the state can impose an income tax and we hope that there will be a graduated income tax. And of course, that's not an option available to local units of government, so we fall back on less progressive ways of raising revenue, namely sales taxes and, and uh, property taxes. So first and foremost, I'm grateful that the people of Illinois decided to give J.B. Pritzker and Juliana Stratton a chance to run the government. And I'm, I'm confident that they will try to work with the legislature um, to accomplish good things for the state. In our own um, county board races, uh, there's been considerable turnover. There were five new members elected uh, in, in March, in the March primary, and, and a couple more in the November election. So the composition of the board will change. And hopefully that will mean that the board is um, more inclined to be supportive of our health and hospital system and more inclined to support the criminal justice reform initiatives that have been the hallmark of the last eight years. Thank you. Um, this question is from... Uh, Tasha Green Cruzette, who's with Voices for Illinois Children, sitting right down here. Her question, Madam President, is black children in Illinois are three times more likely to die from diseases than white children. What health policies can we look forward to from Cook County to deal with this issue? Well, first of all, I'm very proud of our health and hospital system. It's 180 years old. 180 years. And in that time, we've always taken whoever came to our door, regardless of their race, their ethnicity, 
their income, their sexual orientation, their immigrant immigration status, their ability to pay. So our health and hospital system, our two hospitals, Stroger and Provident, and our 16 ambulatory clinics have always taken whoever comes to our door, whether they are adults or children. And it's a tremendous resource for the people of Cook County that we run a health and hospital system like this. Not every county, not all 102 counties in our state, needless to say, have a, have a public health and hospital system, and not even all urban counties in the country have a health and hospital system like ours. So I'm deeply indebted to the good people, Dr. Jay Shannon and his staff, um, and of course our board headed by Hill Hammock, for their good work. So I guess I'd say, in terms of government resources, we have a health and hospital system on which we spend half of our revenue. 50% of the resources that come into the county go to health and, our health and hospital system. Um, we're challenged in that our two hospitals are two out of 72. So there's 72 hospitals in Cook County. But our two hospitals provide almost half of the charity care in Cook County. 47% of the charity care is provided by our two hospitals. Stroger and Provident. So that means, frankly, that most of the other hospitals in Cook County are not doing their fair share in providing health care to people who need it and can't pay for it. And that's a real challenge, because we have control over what we do in Cook County, but we surely don't have control over the other institutions, the other uh, hospitals in Cook County that um, are not bearing their share of the burden. Now, we have, we have a number of, of safety net hospitals um, that do yeoman service. But I will say uh, that some of our largest hospital systems and our academic hospitals don't do enough. And as I said, that means the burden falls disproportionately on our health and hospital system for providing 50% of the charity care delivered in our county in any given year. Thank you very much. Uh, this question is from Sylvia Ewing with the Elevate Energy Group. Uh, you mentioned climate change and sustainability. How will you support the Future Energy Jobs Act? So I don't know what the Future Energy Jobs Act is. So, <laughs> Sylvia, you're going to have to help me. Where are you? Pardon me? Oh, good. I've got staff. I love it. Okay. Deb Stone. <laughs> Deb Stone is head of our Department of Environment and Sustainability. Thank you. That I know. <laughs> I've been briefed on Community Solar. I didn't know it came out of the Jobs Act. Oh, thank you. Um, so, Madam President, you're wearing several hats now. Uh, President of the Cook County Board, Chairman of the Cook County Democratic Party. Uh, you're also a candidate for mayor in the city of Chicago. Okay. So if we could shift a little bit from county-directed questions, there are a couple about uh, these other offices. Uh, this is from Graham Grady with uh, Taft Law, and he wants to know, why do you want to be mayor? Inquiring minds, and Graham certainly is an inquiring mind, wants to know. You know, I have, I have three grandchildren. Uh, they live in the city and they go to our public schools. And I want them to have great schools in their neighborhoods. I want the ha them to have opportunities in their future. I want them to have safe streets. And I want that not just for them, but for all of our children. For all of our children. I had the privilege of serving as Alderman of the Fourth Ward for almost 20 years, 19 years. And I worked hard to improve our neighborhood schools, to bring new housing into communities that had suffered demolition and abandonment and fires. Um, I worked to build our business community with, 
with retail shopping. And of course, we, we worked hard to provide good constituent service. And I think it's really important that those priorities, great schools, economic development, and service to constituents, are not just a matter of aldermanic uh, concern, but concern citywide. And I hope to bring the same energy and the same commitment to public education, to community development, and frankly, to safe streets that I brought to the alderman as alderman of the fourth ward to the city of Chicago. Thank you. Uh, this is from Christopher Devine, City Club member. Chris, where are you? Oh, okay, off to the right. Um, here's his question. If elected mayor, how will you increase city revenue without increasing the tax burden on the residents and business owners of Chicago? Well, clearly, um, the city of Chicago faces some real challenges in, in terms of finances. Uh, you know, there's one disturbing uh, fact that we should be aware of. Uh, you know, the city is dependent upon property tax revenues, but a third of our property tax revenues go into TIF districts, tax increment financing districts. And most of our loop, most of the, the most expensive property in the city is in a TIF district. And TIF districts were created as a catalyst for redevelopment. Uh, but for the creation of a TIF district, development might not take place. And yet, the most valuable property in our city is in TIF districts. Um, every year, the city declares a TIF surplus of some amount or other, and all the taxing bodies uh, get a portion of that a TIF surplus based on their percentage of property tax uh, collections. But we have to look at TIF districts, and there's no way in which it's sustainable where, that a third of our property tax revenues go into, into this, these sequestered funds, basically. So that's one example. We need to wind down those TIFs, and we need to be more aggressive about declaring TIF surpluses. Um, we also need to look at things like our workman comp, comp claims. Um, the county has 22,000 employees. The, the city has 30-something, 30 30 31. Um, we pay $20 million a year in workman's comp. The city pays $100 million. So there, there are some obvious ways in which we need to um, look at our expenses, look at the way in which our, re our revenues are allocated, and try to be sure that we are being as co cost effective and efficient as we possibly can be. Um, in the next week or two, I, I will be attending a briefing, some of our uh, folks who are involved in the city's bond business about how we can um, be more effective and efficient financially based on their knowledge. So this is an ongoing process of educating myself about what the opportunities are, but I will just say the city has some uh, tremendous fiscal challenges and um, I, there's no easy path to solution. And you know, let me just say, you know, when I, when I took this job as president of the county board, things were kind of a mess. I used to joke that, you know, <clears throat> if you came into a job uh, that was where things were kind of in turmoil and not going very well, it was a mixed blessing. Um, on one hand, if you could just make things a little better, you'd get a lot of credit. But on the other hand, they were kind of a mess, so <laughs> making them even a little bit better was going to be a challenge. I think over the last eight years, we've righted the ship. Um, Cook County is in much better fiscal shape than it was when I came in the door, and actually it's in much better fiscal shape than the city or the state. Um, you could say that's a low bar, okay. Um, <laughs> but much better shape than the city or the state. But when I came into office, I, I thought, and I sometimes said, you know, I'm going to have to do things that might make it impossible for me to be reelected. But I'm going to do them, and if I can't be reelected, I can't be reelected. Um, and frankly, I feel the same way about the mayor's office. There are going to have to be some very difficult things done over the next four years. And uh, if that means doing those difficult things that are right for the city of Chicago precludes my reelection, then that's what I'll do, just the same. Thank you very much, President Preckwinkle.